at mass spectrometry or mass spec. So mass spec is going to give the mass to charge ratio um, in a sample. So it's typically used for uh, figuring, out, figuring out how many isotopes there are or the atomic mass of a sample, different things like that. Um, so it separates isotopes according to mass. Um, how is this done? So essentially you would ionize the sample, you would send it, th and, and so it would kind of form all, let's say, positive charges, and then it would send it through this big magnet, and it would separate it based on the, char the mass to charge ratio. So essentially things that are heavier would not be deflected as much as things that are lighter, and that's how it's able to separate all these peaks based on their masses. Um, so what does the printout look like? What does the spectrum look like? So it would, here's that, for example, taking copper and passing it through, um, you would see that there's these two peaks here, one at 63, one at 65, and I can kind of go across here and see the relative number of atoms or the percent abundance in that sample. So this is telling me that copper 63 <coughs> would make up about maybe 69%, and copper 65 would take up about maybe 31 percent. So based on this data, how could you calculate the atomic mass of copper? Um, you could do percent abundance over 100 times the mass of each isotope and add them together. If there's a third isotope, you do the same thing. Sometimes percent over abundance is called fractional abundance. And what you're going to notice is um, whichever is the higher peak is going to be more abundant, so the atomic mass should be closer to 63 since it's a weighted average. So let's see, um, 69 over 100, so we say this is percent abundance over 100 times the mass, or 0.69 times 63, and I'm doing 0.31 times 65, and I'm adding those two together, and I get about 63.6, which is closer to 63 than 65 since more particles is found as 65. Uh, CU 63. And this should match or be close to the periodic table's um, atomic mass. So if you send some, so CU is a an element that is not found diatomically, it's not found as molecules. If you pass through something that is a molecule, um, what's going to happen is you're going to get a peak corresponding to the molecule, like CO2 has a molar mass of 44, so you'll see the peak at 44, but it's also, uh, the, the ionizer has so much energy that it's actually also going to fragment it into its constituent elements um, and into even maybe smaller molecules. So you'll see that there's this peak um, at, at here, we'll do this here, there's a peak here at 28, which would correspond to C with O, just breaking off one of the oxygens and leaving the CO. There's a peak here at 16, which corresponds to just the oxygen, and there's a peak at 12. So the, 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 the lesson here is that if you send through a molecule, it's going to fragment it as well into its elements and even smaller pieces. So if, for instance, we look here at this mass spectrum of bromine, um, which is a diatomic molecule, so it's found as a molecule in nature. When you pass it through the mass spec, you're going to notice some peaks here around 80, and you're going to notice some peaks here at 160. So what's happening is these peaks at 160 are your diatomic bromine peaks, where you have two BRs bonded together. And this is where you have separate BRs. So Essentially, I could say, okay, these are the molecules. So it must, it makes sense that, okay, at around 160, okay, I have a diatomic Br, but it would be composed of Br79 and a Br81, which adds up to 160. Um, here I would have two BRs bonded together, but they both be BR79s, and that's why it would add up to 158. And this is where I'd have two BRs, but they both be 81, and that's why they add up to 162. I can see the individual isotopes that are present down here, which would be the fragments. There's BR81 present, there's BR79 present. So essentially, I, um, if I have a diatomic molecule, I want to look down here, uh, I want to look at the isotopes, the individual fragments, because that's going to tell me how many isotopes are here. So even if I didn't give you this information up top, I could say, hey, look, there's a 79 and an 81, um, and they're pretty close in abundance um, that are present. And that's why I have these three peaks that correspond to the molecules of the different combinations that are possible of 79 and 81. 
So as a heads up, always ask yourself when you're looking at one of these mass specs, are you looking at something for just a monatomic element, so I'm only looking at atoms, or am I looking at something for a molecule? Okay, um, so here's a question. Elements I and TE have similar average atomic masses. A sample that was believed to be a mixture of I and TE was run through a mass spec. Um, all the following statements are true. Which one would be the best basis for concluding that the sample was pure TE? Um, so here I'm just looking at individual atoms. Um, and I'm saying, okay, TE forms a minus 2 charge, whereas I forms minus 1. That would have no impact on this mass spec. TE is more abundant than I in the universe. Um, that wouldn't really be answering the question here. But if I go on to my periodic table um, and I look up I, I has a, an atomic mass of 53. So if I had only one naturally occurring isotope that had 74 neutrons, 74 plus 53 add up to 127. So if I was in here and I knew this fact, there would be some type of peak at 127, a mass number corresponding to 127. So there must not be any I in the sample because of that. So this C would be a valid reason. I having a first ionization energy, this mass spec gives nothing about ionization energy. That would be PE as photoelectron spectroscopy. Um, okay, so here's another um, question based on the mass spectrum of atom Y. So this is atom Y, so these are all atoms. There's no molecular peaks here. Um, which of the following is false? Peaks A and D come from atoms that have the same number of electrons. That would be true if it's the same element, if it's all atom Y. There are seven isotopes. Let's see how many peaks. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be true. Each peak would be um, looking at the isotopes that are there. Peak C comes from the most abundant. That's the highest, so I would say that's most abundant. That's true. Peak D comes from an atom with four more protons. No, we're saying these are all Y. They would all have the same number of protons.